Easy E. Sean E. Right. Here we go. Um, you're going to have to talk into the mic. Oh. I, I know we've upgraded and all, but you're going to have to, like, the, that, that mic thing there, like, if your face is there, like, your mouth is near that mic, as opposed to, like, you know. Sean, I'm getting a pain in my neck. What's wrong with your neck? Like, usually I get a pain in my beep, but, like, this is... Like, I have to hold my head in one position. What? You've got this big, luxurious one over there with a little cover on it, and it looks great, and you're looking at me and the mic's to the side of you. I can't move my head, is what you're telling me. <laughs> well, look, when, 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 when you start out, when you, you know like the engineer and the producer of the podcast. one of those things on. The neck braces? My neck, yeah, and I'm just stuck in this one position. I tried to read something for today's episode, and you're like, don't move your head. <laughs> <laughs> this well, was so much easier when it was just the laptop. Jeez. Yeah, but you know, we this is episode number 70 of the Any Evan Given Run. Yeah, can't talk after 69 episodes. This is episode <laughs> number 70. We missed the joke, so. <laughs> <laughs> we missed the joke. We missed our punchlines, but we are here. Episode 70 of the Any Given Run Day podcast. We have new equipment here that I'm very happy about but i have no idea what we're talking about in today's podcast because eric you're leading the way on something i know absolutely nothing about i'm just still annoyed we missed 69 <laughs> episode i'm not gonna lie but uh yeah this week we're going to be talking about triathlons a uh, couple of events that are happening towards the end of the year we did say we talk about different events and, and different things to encourage people uh towards the end of the year and the first one we're going to be talking about is try a tie 2021 try a tie 2021 right after the intro music for the any given one day podcast Is your neck really not bad of a way? Is what? Is your neck really not bad of a way? I can't move. Well, like it's it, not a natural sitting position. Your your posture is much better. You're upright. Well, you you know, I'm slouched over, leaning on the table with me hand. I feel like I'm being interrogated. Right. Question number one. <laughs> what event are you doing in September? <laughs> so I have signed up for the Olympic triathlon in Triathai. It is a good one. Um a lot of people are afraid of triathlons. We've talked about it before on shows, as you might remember, back in the early days about when we when we started to get into it, when it was the four of us trying to do a marathon, we were talking about triathlon and the different um the different kind of backgrounds that we all had, the gym, the GEA, hmm. putting who did nothing, and then uh, <laughs> myself and yourself with the the the, the other backgrounds. But it, yeah, this it's on the fifth weekend of the fifth of September. The beauty about triathlon um it's very flat right so if you're in any way nervous about will i be able to go at the the distance um it's actually very doable um a lot of triathlons around blessington and stuff that you'll see next year if people are getting into it they're quite hilly and okay. they can yeah they can really take it out on the cycles and stuff and then the run is quite difficult but try toy is very forgiven it's very forgiven for a beginner um and that's why we wanted to mention today so they have an event so i'll be doing the olympic with uh, rachel who has been on this before um but one of the girls katie she's going to do the try a try so it say is that ex- five times really fast it a try a try in a tie <laughs> try, try a try in a tie try a try in a tie what yeah. is try a tie in a tie so what scares people most and even me is the swim terrified to swim swimming is not everyone's strong point for an yes. island nation we're terrible swimmers um but it reduces the swim length so it's a 250 meter swim in the river barrow which we became very very familiar with uh over our run with dara but um the beauty about the try try is the 250 meters are with the flow of the river. You're never swimming against the river like some of the other ones, the Olympics and the double Olympics. Um, so you, if you lay on your back and, and did nothing, you'd make it to the transition point for the bike. So it's it's a really good one to encourage people to just give a triathlon a go. And it's a 20K cycle following that, which is, re- it is doable for everyone of any standard. You know, on the bike, 20K sounds like a long distance, but you're mm-hmm. on a bike, it's not actually that bad. And it's it's flat enough course and it, it is a comfortable cycle. If if your aim is to just finish an event this year, it is a brilliant one to do. And then it's a 4K run to finish. Um, again, to some people, that could be daunting as well. But there are seven weeks between now and then. So okay. usually I would go for eight-week programs coming up to a triathlon. But seven weeks, take the hit and just go for it. You know, first week is the get-to-know week anyway. So um, with seven weeks to go, it's definitely something that everyone can do. 
And well, okay, so you're setting up to not many people have done swim in the last couple of months with swimming pools not closed. Is it a case now you have to go with the river, with the flow of the river, or into a swimming pool? And are you prioritizing more swimming if you if you recommend starting to do this? Or actually, what what are you doing? You're doing the Olympics, so are yes. you prioritizing more swimming? Or how are you so, approaching it? With the Olympic, I haven't swam in months. Right. Months and months and months since I was in the States in, I don't know, we're, we're going back to last no, uh, October, I think was the last time I swam. And it wasn't anything. It was just 20 minutes to get into a pool because I could. Right. Um, so if you are afraid of the swimming, I would try and get swimming three times a week. If you're going to do the try a try, try and try and try. <laughs> so try to get to a pool if you can two to three times. 250 meters is not a massive difference. It, like it, it's 10 lengths of a 25 meter pool um if you're in any way nervous in the barrow you can stand up pretty much for the entire length of the swim as you're swimming with me with long gangly arms i'm nearly touching the bottom as i'm taking a stroke with a swim you know like it's right it is a it is a shallow swim so you shouldn't be nervous about deep water or whatever it is you can stand up at any point so it's 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 okay um but i would still focus on the cycle so you're going to spend the majority of time on the bike so you, you try and match your training with the length of time you're going to do on the race so swimming is going to be a very small portion of it so don't give it all of your time do it so it's sufficient to get you out of the water it's not going to be to make a break of your race and um, it will terrify some people but you can get through it if you are in any way can swim if you've been on holidays and, and can do a couple of laps of, of the pool yep then 250 meters in, in seven weeks even going twice a week you'd definitely be able to do it 100 percent be able to do it and because it is an experience it's not something that you need to be expert at where it's trying to encourage people into the realm of triathlons um my priority would be on the cycling because that's the longest part of your day is your cycle particularly because as you step up i don't like to tell people just focus on your swimming um particularly for the try try even though it is the most because as you go up the gears into the the olympics or the, the sprint the olympic or the double distance you are you're getting into long long cycles yeah. so try and portion your training out to match the length of time you're going to be doing or, or what length of time you're going to be doing cycle run swim so cycle would probably be my highest priority because you make up a lot of time on the bike it, it, the more efficient you are as a cyclist the better your race time will be because a lot of the time can be made on the bike right your run is your run if you're used to running a five minute kilometer you're going to get off the bike you're going to be like bambi for the first 500 meters and then you're just going to settle into your pace and you've only three and a half kilometers to go so you can get yourself up to a 5k comfortable run yeah whatever that pace is maybe add on 10 seconds that's what you can expect on the day and like that with people and encouragement on a race event you might even knock off 10 and um, so that's that's pretty much so i, I would i would kind of go if you're a yeah i would prioritize the cycle get lots of cycling in it'll build your endurance it's great endurance builder and it's low impact if you're nervous about the swimming for your own sake swim twice three times a week and then add in a running plan as you would a uh, bike to run sessions getting off the bike practicing that jelly leg feeling um, and apart from that just building yourself up for a 5k pretty much and um, to go at your constant space uh, constant pace just to finish the race uh, i was just about to ask you about uh, bambi legs and stuff like that so uh would you combine a lot of brick sessions in terms of brick being uh bike and run bike to run yeah. bike to run uh would you be doing that maybe the the, the long one at the weekend and then having the bike and run separately to have different goals on it or are a lot of your sessions going to be brick runs so it depends on the distance you're going for as well if you're doing the um the try which right. we're, we're trying to encourage people to have a look at because it's last minute you know okay. it's seven weeks to go um and, and like the olympic distance it will be a challenge for me to do this it's two and a half to 245 of exercise in a day it's a long race it's mm-hmm. you know you're looking at the guts of a marathon you know like it's in terms of time spent exercising um but to try one i would encourage people on all of their not all their trainings get used to just the cycle for the first couple of weeks after maybe week three then i would try and no matter what cycle they did just get off the bike and run 100 meters get off the bike and run 200 meters okay i'm not saying go out and do a 10k after the bike every time you just need to get used to that feeling of transition um so after your third week after every cycle i would encourage no matter what put on your runners get used to taking off go through 500 meters and then end your workout on your longer sessions plan on the planned kind of bike to run sessions yeah i'd be doing my 
45 minute cycle followed by a 20 minute easy run do you know what I, I would be planning to nearly especially for the the try try distance i'd be nearly planning to cover that distance it is a really nice training distance that you can build up to most people could do it walk or run and cycle you could do it on the day if you did no training um you would surprise yourself if you just wanted to finish and go and do it you would very comfortably so all that you're going to be training to do over the next seven weeks is to improve your time or to try not to stop or not let your so the idea behind the cycle is your your legs should be moving all the time if if you stop pedaling you're you, you're burnt out at that stage and it has happened to me before and you're like i actually just need to free wheel here for a minute and you lose yeah. the momentum and then you're trying to catch it up but you, you can't give anymore it's kind of like walking and running uh to finish a distance um so there the goals you need to say to yourself on a 20 minute 30 minute 40 minute cycle like okay i'm gonna continuously turn my legs for the 20 minutes then the next day up in that kind of standard and so all you're going to really change for yourself is the endurance that you can withstand for the day and that will in turn affect time but if it's your first one time is irrelevant finish it and finish it to something that you're happy with if you're not happy that you stopped during the run that's what you should be training towards but if you're just happy to cross that line for me the best part of the race is when i get out of water the race is over doesn't matter the distance that's coming afterwards it is tiring because i'm trying to beat people yeah but once the swim is done i feel like i've survived a near-death experience <laughs> for myself so it's like yeah listen it's a great day from here on out so um but yeah that's that's what i would recommend to people in terms of the bike to run anytime you get off the bike you can start in the week one to train just have the runners nearby put them on just try now I'm not saying do five minutes of a cycle, get off and run 100 meters. That's not really it. You need to kind of You've get into that weeks. rhythm of cycling for 20, 25 minutes, then try to run. Because that's when you're you're switching the brain to go, we're no longer cycling, we're running. And it's it's a bizarre feeling. I, I recommend people just to try it anyway, just to feel how bizarre it is. I, I did it once or twice now, just during the previous lockdown. I had the yellow submarine of a bike we have. I, and that, I can't Best pedal. bike I ever gave you. <sighs> That's the only bike you ever gave me. So by best. process of elimination, it was. <laughs> Crossed myself a few times on with the gears, but however, um, I found if I did even around here, and it's only a 7, 8K, and there's a fair bit of hills, whatever. One, I never did it consistent, consistently in terms of, like, I always free wheel. Like, I go a little bit, free wheel, try to find the right gear, go a little bit, turn, 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 then I'd free wheel for a little bit there, which is no good. Not that's no good, but you want to get that continuous, conti- continuous rotation as you're talking about but yeah when i got off the bike i was like ah, i go for a three four k run which was nothing to me at the time oh bambi leg the knees were shot out side by side i, I felt like i was a a horse on ice or something like that i didn't know what was going on there so <laughs> I, I and and that that's that's probably the, the part i'd be good at let alone you know the swimming and not being able to swim yeah. and all the rest the swim just to put people's mind at ease a little bit with the, the barrel you've talked about already that the the, the the depth of the water is is pretty shallow. You can stand up again. Is it easier? Are you going with the flow of the river? And does that yeah. make a difference? I suppose yeah, it's as easier said, in a swimming yeah, pool. You're, you're going you're going with the flow. Um, is it easier than a swimming pool? What makes it hard is it's cloudy water. You know, when you're in a swimming pool, you can count every tile. You can follow the line in the middle. There's comfort in knowing that you're in a heated pool. Um, obviously in the river the temperature is not as warm as a heated pool but it's not cold you're going to have a wetsuit on it's one of the things if you are going to do it but i wouldn't recommend anyone for a try try to go and buy a wetsuit a wetsuit can cost anywhere from 100 to good racing suits up to five you know you, like Jeez. it's it can be expensive but beg borrow steel there's a lot of people out there if you ask would would definitely lend you one for the day you know i know it's COVID times and stuff but you can sanitize these things as well yeah. you know it's the same as you go surfing you hand back your wetsuit they sanitize every wet you know so i would definitely for that i would try and borrow one but to come back to your question is it easier in the river yeah if you have water flowing with you definitely easier you know like yeah. it's, it's it's helping you along it, it's keeping your kind of movement going so every time when you're taking a breath when you're going against the flow sometimes if you're tired and it's a long one and particularly for me other great swimmers won't probably have this issue but i look at the tree and then i go down and take my strokes i look up the tree is still there and i'm like <laughs> all right i need to kick on a little bit here so it it can be difficult when you're going against the flow you're working against yourself for a certain portion and and for the olympic distance uh, i think it's 600 meters of it is against the flow and um, 900 weight but you notice the difference as soon as you turn the corner it's like same way as anyone's ever gone running in the wind 
when the wind's behind you you don't know it's windy when you turn into the wind to run against it you're like oh boy yeah I'm so it's that. it's the same kind of feeling it is the same kind of feeling that when you turn that that corner to come with the flow all of a sudden every time you look up there's a car gone by or a tree gone by and you're 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 fairly moving at that point and it, it is it kind of makes you feel like you're a good swimmer as well if you're a bad one so it's, <laughs> a bit of confidence is, building yeah, before getting out of the, the, the river it is and it's and it's for me i just conserve the energy with the flow because again i'm not a great swimmer but i'll stay at it you know and then once i turn i know even if i just flap my arms or kick my legs i'm you're getting moving. to the bridge to get out of the river yeah so it, it is it is a good thing it is a good um for anyone who is slightly nervous of open water or you know getting into dark murky rivers with shopping trolleys in them it's you're gonna move you're gonna move regardless so let, let's break it down let's say someone's listening to this podcast that goes you know what the dingo marathon we talked about last week in the podcast the lads recommend one lads it was sold out so cheers for that too it's sold out for 2022 because it got cancelled this year Dublin's not going ahead don't feel like doing a virtual but hang on there's actually this event going ahead this new challenge I've seven weeks ago for this try a try try a try in a tie yeah. <laughs> struggle there again with that in terms of equipment and, and, and a rough guideline for week one, let's say it's the Monday to go, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm going to get started. What equipment do they need? Obviously, they need a bike and a pair of runners, but yeah. what else is going on? So, obviously, the running element, easy enough. Um, yeah. Certain events, I don't know what equipment try a tire going out, but in the previous years I've done it, they've given you what's called a race belt where you can actually clip your number onto it and it's it's ideal they give you that race belt uh, they did in previous years i'm not going to say they're giving it out this year but in previous years they have given out a race belt and um, but a race belt is handy but you're going to need something to pin your race number onto yourself for cycle and run right um, it's a little thing that kind of catches people out it's a small thing but you can see so maybe have some safety pins with you ready to clip onto yourself it's just a little thing so cool. starting from the prep side of things um a bike you can do it on a mountain bike you can do it on a road bike. There is no rules as such to say as well, bike. Now, okay. ideally, get yourself a road bike. Um, there are shops around. If you look around, there are places that will rent you a road bike for a weekend. If you talk to them about doing it for um, the seven-week period, they would gladly rent you a bike. And I guarantee you there are many people who have got the bike to work scheme that bought a beautiful bike and are not using it. True. So... It is a case of just having the confidence to ask people, you know, or, or put it in, even into our group online to throw it in. Does anyone have a lend of a bike? You know, unfortunately, mine will be used, so no one can borrow mine. But um, but there will be a bike to use. Again, it doesn't need to be spectacular. You're just there to complete. You know, you're, you are competing, but yeah. it's all about completion, you know, and, and getting a taste of what it's like. Because you don't want to spend all your money investing in all these expensive bikes, expensive wetsuits if you don't know what it's about yeah and you don't feel like taking it up afterwards yeah. when, when stuff opens up again you might go i'm just taking taking up running from there yeah. so just the best way possible to get people to do this but same time not spend an absolute fortune the next one simple one with a bike comes helmet yes a lot of people don't think about the helmet because we have this ego thing where i'm not wearing a helmet when i'm cycling but you are not allowed to leave the transition area without a helmet on um so yeah you you have to have a helmet um it's another thing to think about when you're borrowing the bike ask for the helmet as well yeah so cycling end that's all you really need um it's ideal if the bike has a, a holder for a bottle of water or something that you can drink while you're on the bike Um, other things for longer races you'll see people sellotaping nutrient bars to the the bike um, it's a way Smart. of Smart Yeah that's how you get your food in For the longer races um, Especially when you're on the bike It's a lot easier to eat While cycling Than it is In the other aspects that are When you can't eat While you're swimming Anyway that's for sure <laughs> uh, I wouldn't eat much out there anyway. No no definitely um, not So yeah So cycling then That's pretty much All you would need to cycle There's no restrictions On the cleats The clip-ins Or if it's open pedals Once you have a bike That moves And I've seen plenty of people On what I would call heavy road hybrid bikes. Ones that you would look like people cycling into work with their bag on as opposed to doing a race. Right. See people on those kind of bikes. Um, so it's, again, it's expected with the try a try as well. Now the organizers, if they ever listen to this, might be like, here are you. <laughs> but, you know, the idea of it is to encourage people to do it, you know. So yeah. whatever you can do, beg, borrow, steal on the bike element. For the swim, you need to be in a wetsuit. So quality of the wetsuit is entirely up to the person our good friend elaine did it in what i would call kind of a surfing wetsuit where it was just kind of keep you warm in the sea when you're playing around kind of wetsuit that but, sounds like elaine 
Yeah, but it was only 250 meters, you know, so the drag and all this other stuff, she just needed to be in a wetsuit and she went down the river. And she, she begged, borrowed and still that wetsuit, did and she? And that's it, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's all you kind of have to do in terms of getting the wetsuit for it. Um, again, some places will sell secondhand cheap wetsuits. Some people you can beg, borrow and steal off. Um, there's great triathlon shops in around Dublin and most of them will have secondhand stuff that they're willing to sell or half ripped or something. Again, it's 250 meters. You won't even be in the water long enough to feel cold. You could right. do it in shorts, but you have to be in a wetsuit in order to participate. That's the rules. So, um, so yeah, a wetsuit is, again, it can be an expense, but if you have any a wetsuit for the try one, anything else than that, I'd be recommending getting a decent wetsuit. But yeah, anything to cover your, your body while you're floating down the river for 250 that works. meters. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Just I'd... give you a try. Um, you're also going to get a race hat. Um, so you'll have a colored hat depending on your some people wear two hats to kind of keep their their heads a little bit warm and obviously goggles goggles will be a key um because you you want to be able to somewhat see where you're going all the time um to keep kind of fluid swimming gotcha um so yeah that would be it for the swim and then the run is just your runners it's just whatever shoes you have um and a nice bag to kind of keep it all kind of neat you don't even need a bag i'd recommend bringing a towel with you lay your stuff out near the towel so you'll have your runners socks all that kind of stuff so when you're in the transition you can change easy are you in so you ha- do you have different things different transition areas or is it all similar tra- is it the one transition area yeah, for so try, it's try? The one transition area so when you arrive to the race you will walk with your bike you'll register for the race you'll come in you'll put your bike on a specific may some some races it matches your race number so right. most races it, do, it matches your race number so if you're race number 400 you will go to stall 400 on bigger races where there's so many people they just kind of it's a free for all so you just remember where you left your bike and so pick a reference us the third one in because when you come out of the water and you're you disorientated and yeah, all yeah, yeah i can only imagine so um you leave your bike underneath your bike then you will have your towel to quickly dry your feet you'll have your socks you'll have your runners you'll have your cycling shoes or if they're the same pair brilliant it's less of a transition then gotcha um and you will come back to the same place so when you come off the bike you'll be running back to that same place again have a reference point so you know where you're running to the bike because a lot of people lose a lot of time in a transition and for those who want to break an hour you know not not an hour but you know for an example an hour they end up doing an hour and two and you find out they've spent about seven minutes in transition, you know? Um, so you can get that down to about a minute and a half per transition if you're good enough. You if know? you know what you're doing there. Exactly. People getting lost, running down the wrong way with their bike. It adds a minute, you know? It, 100%. It does, yeah. So, and that's, that's pretty much what you can expect from that. You'll be timed in and out of the transition so you know exactly what how long you've been in each, how long your cycle was to the second, how long your swim was. Um, so yeah, it's, it is and very enjoyable day it can be a bit daunting but it's something that will give people a great sense of achievement it's phenomenal to be able to take on three sports yeah um, and to give a good stab at each one and 250 meters i know i said it is small but it's it's nothing to be laughed at when you put it in with the other stuff you know for your first one it's a phenomenal achievement to get done it, it really is and it's something i would encourage people to try um and that's why it is called its name but the the other element of it is you are going to get hooked. It comes with a warning. Okay. It can get expensive when you add in wetsuits, when you add right. in bikes, when you add in everything else, you're constantly going to buy, you buy a turbo trainer to train indoors like I've done. So I'm saying it with a warning, do it, but you're going to love it. You are going to love it. And it's, it's slightly more addicting than a marathon feeling. Obviously. You found it really? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You would, you would do an Olympic now, if, if you'd sign up for one or the other, it'd be Olympic triathlon over, over doing a marathon. Um, I would say half Ironman over marathon. Half I'd Ironman. I'd have to go to that length. Like an Olympic, I would do, it's two and a half hours, two or 45. A marathon is a big day out. Yes. So I'd have to go up to the half Ironman to say, if I was going to choose, what am I going to do? Marathon or half Ironman? Half Ironman, Ironman yeah. June now. Yeah, absolutely. Jeez, it's just, there's so much fear in it for me with the water. There's so much of what if the tire goes what if this goes you know what you know there's there's so much in it the um, fact that like the, the, the one that one of the things that always supposed to be off apart from the swimmer is what if that tire goes if the tire goes some people carry the pump i'm all in i don't carry anything else so once the tire is gone that's it, it it's over. race over it's like you know game over f1 someone someone if someone's kind enough they can throw you a tube and a pump and you'll meet them afterwards or something you know like it's 
you, you kind of take a chance but, on that element. But. By the time, I suppose, if you're going over time, and by the time you put the tube in and all the rest, yeah. and, and like. So for me, the, the day is done. It's done. Although it did happen us in uh, one of the events we did. It was actually a duathlon. Myself and Austin yeah. were doing it. And he started in the wave ahead of me, but he was cruising. He was doing well. And uh, I was on the bike for the second part of the cycle. I was cruising by and I said, well, lawless. And I didn't know who it was because we was going by him so quick. There was someone running with his bike. And I, it turns out later it was Ozzy. He got a flat tire and he had to run 10k before he had to run 10k. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so and of course, he still ran the 10k. He, no yeah, so he just ran with his bike. He said, Time is gone now, but I'm finishing this race. So, yeah, ran, Fair play. Ran, ran with the bike. So, it is an option for people. You know, like once you get to that transition point, if you're, if you just say it's, it's gone, but I'm finishing. Now, when you go into larger distances, like, um, the half Ironman you're covering 90 kilometers on the bike you're not running that <laughs> forgot a flat around 30k and I don't think you're going to run it and then run a half marathon to finish so no it's, um, but yeah it is it is doable and it, the beauty about it is um, a lot of people who would criticize us for our long runs are like you're going to suffer with your knees you're going to do this it could people are playing GEA and rugby with broken fingers and shoulders and bad backs and everything and mm-hmm. um, every sport has its flaws but it also has benefits but the beauty about the swimming and cycling as you can imagine what i'm going to say next it's impact free you're not putting the same strain onto your joints as you are when you're running um so you're going that distance of marathons and stuff when you go into the half ironman but and a little bit more with the cycle and run but the impact is not the same the endurance level is i would argue is higher because you have to be going for that period of time in different sports doing different things you're you're pushing your body in different ways you know when we go on a run we hit 6k autopilot switch yep. off we could have a, you could do anything you're just you're going that's it the the train is moving and bar a fall it's not stopping um but you have to be good you have to be competent in each of the disciplines it keeps you training more you have to again i'll come back to we haven't touched on in terms of you were saying week one training we'll t- we'll talk on that of what people should kind of expect for themselves but like you you kind of have to be disciplined in fitting your training around your work day you're not just going for a run it's not a case of putting on you have to go to a swimming pool you have to afford the time to get there a lot more planning to it a lot, a lot more, more planning um and most times people are going to be like especially now because you have to book into a swimming pool the only slot might be six o'clock in the morning yep you have to be willing to go you're going to be doing two disciplines depending on your level and what you want out of it if you're just trying it and got giving it a go you could pick a discipline a day and just do that and take a day off you know you could you could build yourself up like that definitely yep uh, when you're going up to the other level you need to kind of be you'd nearly be doing two disciplines every day so you probably go for a swim in the morning six o'clock then lunchtime you might do some of your rehab stuff you might get some body weight stuff in work on the core glutes stretches yeah foam rolling in the evening then might be a bike session for an hour and a half and after every bike session put on your runners um, do 100 meters 200 meters just to keep that transition feeling going so it's a long day it's a huge commitment lot, depending on what level you want to go for yeah if you're just happy drinking pints and going for a cycle you don't have to do any of it you know like if if you're come and there are plenty of people who do i'm partially one of them except <laughs> i get so scared of failure that when it gets close to the event i work hard hmm. um but yeah it is it is enjoyable it is something that I know we've talked on it a lot. Of people might be like, this is not for me at all. I might have switched off from the start, but it is something I got into because I was afraid of water. Right. I'm not afraid of it. I'll go to a swimming pool. I'll swim around. I'm not terrified of water, but the open water scares me because there's sea monsters and you don't go with sea monsters, even what? in the river. There's sea monsters everywhere. <laughs> so, but it's just, it's not even... You can't even explain why it is. It's an irrational fear. You know, right. it's just a swim. Just the location has changed. Like nothing else has changed. The safety factor is still there, you know. So it, it, I don't know why. But anyway, I tried to swim two lengths of a swim pool and probably nearly drowned myself. <laughs> and I was like, right, I said I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Find a way. And I worked at it and worked at it and worked at it and worked at it. And then ended up doing four Olympic triathlons in four weeks. And I was like, mm. you can do it like it, it is possible to do it and it was more of a, a fuck you to myself saying yeah your brain is beating you so you need to kind of take ownership of 
what you think you can and can't do because a lot of the time we put ourselves under that ceiling to be like i'm not that good to do this or he's a better athlete and i I don't want to start with you because you're really quick and now it's just a case of i can do it you know and the fear of can i do it is gone now it's just like oh i don't want to be bad so that's why you know I'm, i'm training now and but it is it is something that is phenomenal to just test yourself gotcha when you come out of your comfort zone no matter what it is but this very much brings people out of their comfort zone and you're you're gonna meet phenomenal athletes it's it is one element about today it's kind of like the marathon except when people are cycling by you they're your support because if someone's passing you out they don't pass you out and go see you later they're like well done you're doing great keep going keep keep going so you constantly have a support network surrounding you yeah it's, it's brilliant and you'll have a little chat with someone as you're going and then you kick on yourself you get a breather or and no one will ever pass you out and not wish you well um it's brilliant it's a phenomenal atmosphere from the athletes and as you're on your cycle um particularly in the olympic when you get out of the water i know someone has got out of the water 15 minutes ahead of me <laughs> like, in That's terms a, of yeah in terms of the time and then when i'm on the cycle they're on the way back on the second half of the 40k as i'm only through five you know like it's yeah you kind of just have to appreciate when you see this there's no ego to it no and even their end there's no ego to it it's just it is what it is like and they all know where you started out and the fellow who's first today might not be first the next day everything is on the day did i get a breath wrong did i swallow a bit of you know there's Mm. so much in involved in it and you will be humbled like the marathon marathon humbles everything but you're humbled by watching these athletes and it's amazing they they don't swim they glide through water like it's it's amazing like Deadly. i i would consider myself a strongish cyclist right I just can't comprehend how these guys go so fast but it's uh, yeah it is amazing it is amazing to watch just before we talk about uh week one and breaking that down for some people who said fuck it i'm doing this i'm signing up not thinking twice Go on, I always find that one of the best learning processes is learning by your mistakes, learning by your failures, different things like that. So I don't mean to put you on the spot with this question, but you're going back to your very first uh, tri tie in um, two years ago in the four Olympic triathlons. When you look back at them, is there anything you went, should have done that during the race that I didn't do? Any mistakes you made? And what would, what would be the main ones that pop out as I say that to you? Yeah, cycling. I just took it for granted that's why i started by saying right cycle is a cycle but it's the longest portion and it's the time it it is the one that can make a difference you're not going to win or lose a triathlon on the swim you may or may not win or lose it on the run the cycle is is where you underestimated it suffered yeah big time because i was in the gym i i had the bike but because i was training in the aquatic center i used the indoor bikes and i was doing just random spin sessions that i was making up myself right don't get me wrong my endurance on the bike was improving it it absolutely was but i was maybe doing that twice a week because i was like ah sure it's a cycle like it'd be grand you're just moving your legs if you can run you could cycle right yeah so i was focused on running and swimming because i was afraid of swimming right and so the fear drove me to the swimming running was my favorite thing at the time and cycling was just this little thing i just did yeah, you literally the transition between the, the swim and the run was the cycle to you and i was just yeah. like it's just a process, to get, a process to, that part. to get to that part and my run was going to be at a 4 30 but i did not anticipate the hurt i was in on the bike and did that put more hurt when you came to the run yeah absolutely so that 4 30 turned to a five minute you know and and you were there that day you seen me running and my form and my run was all over the place shocking heel striking hip swinging i was goosed there yeah was nothing left in the tank but i wasn't gonna stop i wasn't gonna stop but usually i i learned a lot from that and then i very quickly started cycling a lot after the first one towards my last one it was amazing and um, my last one was in westport and i was clipping past people on the run people who would pass me on the cycle but i was consistent with my cycle i, I didn't get ahead of myself or get involved in little sprint races with people at the start i was like no we're kind you of had your game plan keep moving keep moving and i'd put a lot of miles onto the bike through doing the races and the cycles in between so i do a race on the saturday or sunday and then on the tuesday i'd go for an 80k cycle um you know in my recovery week and then i'd be still swimming because i was still afraid of the swimming um and then the runs i was like they'll look after themselves so i i very quickly changed priority into right i need to focus on the bike the cycling is very technical there's a lot to it 
um, when you when you're breaking it down, if you if you were to look at it, it's it's not just spinning your legs, especially if you're clicked into the bike. You know, there's you can break it into four quadrants. There's your leg pulling up, your toe kicking forward over the top of the cycle through your twelve o'clock position. Then you have the the tight quads pushed down in yeah. the three o'clock position, and then you have your heel coming back in the six o'clock position. Yes. So at all times, your legs are are doing something different on both sides to try and be as as efficient and as quick as possible, and um, while being relaxed so if you're smashing hard on the pedals you're burning energy do you know that's that's where people make a lot of mistakes so people and that's one thing i took for granted i was just smashing hard and if you looked at me on the bike you'd see the head bobbing the shoulders yeah. going it shouldn't be it you should be not rigid you should be loose on top and the bottom is doing all the work you shouldn't be bouncing on the bike you're just wasting energy. gotcha because I, I i literally go 12 to 6 i smash down i don't even think of the way up it, yeah. it, it, the hamstrings are asleep they they they're night night it's just the quads bashing down and, and and that's it so when you're training and um, doing your cycles are you approaching it like i don't know it's a stupid question but are you doing certain runs where you're focusing more on the pullback are you doing certain runs yeah, where you're just so a one leg or a single leg or, or what's coming into it a cycle is long so if you're just sitting on a, an, an indoor trainer or say you're in the gym and you're just using the bikes in the gym because you're borrowing that bike. Yep. You're going to cycle for an hour. Realistically, because it's a, a less impact sport, you, you need to go for the hour. You need to be 45 to an hour to an hour and a half because you're you're not bashing the body as much and yep. you can get more endurance. Your heart rate won't come up as much on the cycle. You be, if you're sitting on a gym bike and if you're in a reasonable gear, you'd be lucky to be above 120, 130 beats per minute. So okay. in terms of endurance... You should be on it for a while. Right. And it will only lead to more endurance. So you should see it like that. But don't be silly about it. Over that hour and a half, then you're starting to think about nutrition and stuff. So, you know, be reasonable about it. Um, But when you're on that, what I like to do for the mental game, because some people watch telly, whatever is on, I can't or listen to music. Some days I do when I'm just switched off. I'm like, nah, today is just time on the bike. Um, So I'll break it down. So I say, right. On every five minutes for a minute, I'm only going to pedal with my right leg. Okay. So single leg drills. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm practicing folks and just spinning my right leg in a fluid motion. So if you are spinning your leg incorrectly, you're either spin too fast and you'll get ahead of the dry, the dry train. So you'll you'll feel it kind of click as you catch it again if you're pedaling. Do you ever cycle fast down a hill? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're too fast like, for the thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. So sometimes you can actually do that. So you should try and keep it one fluid power circle, if that makes sense. Yeah, much now. When you cycle with one leg, you very quickly find out the weaknesses on that leg of where you're not pulling where you're not pushing so you can gradually feel as you're kicking your leg forward that it's you're probably kicking too hard at the top and then you can't catch it with the pull back at the bottom so yeah just pick a random time so that's a single leg drill where you just pedal with one leg and just try and keep it fluid so if you're hearing the click click or you're you're hitting or smashing it should just be nice and fluid all the way around you probably won't get that kind of feedback on a gym bike has to be on the road uh, I don't know. I, I I'm trying to think back because I've only ever done it on the the trainer. Yeah. yeah, so it's on the bike. Um, so you can do that on both legs. So there's two minutes. Yep. You, I actually wouldn't. I'd go thirty seconds each leg because the leg gets very tired very quickly. I can imagine. So I do that twice. So there's ten minutes. Right. Now we're into the second segment. So that's my single leg drills done. Then when it hits the next five for the full minute, I'm actually going to focus just kicking over the top. So on every at the 12 o'clock position, just a light kick of the toe going forward. As if you're trying to dip your toe towards the handlebars, you're just trying to do a light kick over the top. That's that's the best way to describe it. So as you're getting to the 10 to 1 position, you're just yeah. trying to force your foot forward. And then just focus on the rest doing itself, but on both legs, focusing on that. Do that for the minute. The next one then, you're focusing on driving down. The next five, and you see how you're gradually, you're gradually working yeah. And then eventually, weeks is- when you get to the end, you're trying to bring it all together. Um, and you'll find most people, when they do it, they'll be really good on one leg at doing a certain element, really bad on the other. The hamstrings will start burning on people as they start doing the pullback. So on the revolution, they're just focused on bringing the heel backwards. They'll find the hammies burning because they're probably using stuff they've never used or they're pulling too hard. That's a good indicator. So, And a lot of people get very rigid as well. So. Mm. A lot of the time I'll remind myself while I'm doing the drills, relax the eyebrows. And the like, eyebrows? Yeah. All right. So when people tense up, they'll start in the eyebrows. And the next time you're out, just start to relax the eyebrows. 
relax your forehead, <laughs> relax your jaw. And then all of a sudden you can start to feel this looseness coming in. Relax the shoulders, focus on your breathing all the way down into relaxing your calves, relax everything and let the legs just turn. And it's amazing the difference that will make because people are sit clamped, holding on to the bars, mm. gritting their teeth, they're working hard. You're burning energy. The more relaxed you can say, the more freer, freer you can move. Gotcha. It will make a difference. It, it won't make a difference maybe in the 20K cycle. Further on. Well, if you're going for any further, you need to be, you need to be kind of relaxing that body. Same as a run. If you're sitting with your shoulders or running with your shoulders tensed up, you're going to start cramping. They're going to get sore. You know, the, longer, yeah. the longer you're in it, the worse it's going to get. So it's all about relaxing, relaxing those shoulders, relaxing everything. One last question before we go move on to the week one and, and we'll wrap up this episode of the podcast. Uh, this is coming from a very, very, very um, basic level of cycling and getting into cycling. But I'm pretty sure there's other people asking the question as well. How long until the pain in the arse from sitting in the saddle stops? Mm, tell still, him good. <laughs> I still feel the pain. Oh man, I'll I'll I'm done. I tell you what, I will have to come back to you on this question because I am at a point now where I think I need to change my saddle. Right. Um, I don't know whether it's the saddle angle. I don't know whether it is, but right between the south pole and other pole, right, very sore. So I I have to look into it because it's got to a point now where it's it's i cannot i can't go beyond the hour and a half two hours it's just sore it's just sore it, and it's taken away from the cycle i know everyone gets sore but i would Next expect level. it to start to get sore around two and a half three now with the with the amount of cycling i'm doing so i yeah i think i'm probably going to look into saddle every everyone is different everyone's body is different everyone's body <laughs> will react different to it um but uh particularly for our gentleman friends it's uh Two and a half, three minutes. It's I'm done. <laughs> yeah. No, you do build up that tolerance. You do build up that tolerance. But um, yeah, the saddle can be all the difference. The padding that you wear in the shorts can be all the difference. So I've added in extra padding into the shorts I have now. So I've I've gone for the deluxe pad now. Um, Does that mean you change shorts between the cycle and the run? Then do you pad the shorts? So or you run when you're shorts? wearing so. A lot of people. Sorry, we go back to equipment. One key element I missed. People will buy a tri suit. Right. So the reason you buy a tri suit is you wear it under the wetsuit. So when you take off the wetsuit, you're ready to run. So and it dries very quickly because real thin material, uh, lycra on steroids. Really, you look great. You look great. Nothing is kept secret in that suit. So it's all out. It's all out. Um, it is something you can get, and again, it adds to expense. Is it essential? Not really. If you wore a swimsuit underneath, took off your wetsuit, put on a t-shirt and shorts, you're good. You're, it's still the same thing it's it's a transition thing it's a convenience thing it's it's everything else you know like there's nothing to say you have to wear it um but if you're looking to be competing then yeah you, you kind of want to you you're don't delay in transition time. yeah exactly. you're delaying time yeah. in transition and they're very comfortable to run in but they don't carry a lot of padding so on my bike my arse does be raw <laughs> come come 30k um because they're it's really you know every bump is felt it's mm. felt through the sit bones you know it's it is, it is and you're on those thin wheels as well on the road bike i can't imagine that's a a, a comfortable ride uh no not really no it's not, not that you're looking for comfort doing no. a, a, a try or anything no. like that like you're yeah. looking for a challenge and get as fast as you can but when it comes to a stage where when you're on a flat you have to stand up for a break that's just not something's wrong when you're standing up you're losing you're losing you're 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 fighting a losing battle like you should be staying in your seat and keeping those legs moving as best you can unless you're on a, a big climb then come out with a saddle for that if needs be but gotcha. even still i try and select my gears to, to keep those legs moving at the same rpm up that hill keeping the same cadence and then when it gets really bad come out of come out of saddle um when you want to stay in a higher gear and keep that speed yeah but again for me i'm not there to win it I'm there to finish it. It's an endurance Enjoy. game. So trying to keep that endurance mind frame for that. Now people will argue with me. People will have different approaches. This is my That's your approach and it's worked for you so far. Absolutely. Okay, right. Let's break it down. Week one. Week it's a one. Monday. Uh, hopefully people listen to the podcast on a Monday. It's the day we get the most downloads. And someone's listened to this podcast. And they went, fuck it. I'm doing it. Week one. Here's the kicker. It depends good answer I, w- I would say that it depends on a lot of things as well i i, I, it depends, I agree it depends that on a lot of things it depends on your commitment level it depends on your home life it depends on your work schedule 
it depends on facilities that are near you when they're open so i could tell everyone you need to swim on monday but it might necessarily work so we go back to what i said about we break down the cycle i would look to get three cycles in a week okay i would look to get three swims if you're nervous about your swimming uh you know if we're talking about the tri level now 250 meter swim 20k cycle yeah run. that's the one we're talking about today yeah. three cycles two runs two swims and i think for now for the 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 seven weeks people would be more than covered and people might be like oh but running's not my good side you are building endurance by cycling okay so your fitness will improve so people who are like i can barely run 1k at the minute that 1k will will increase very quickly when you're cycling three times a week swimming and running because so, you're still trying your your aerobic capacity yeah, whether absolutely. it's absolutely so there is a certain level of a crossover with all three exactly but if you're doing three and two um so you're you're already talking at a crossover there you know of you're gonna have to swim and run in one day so that's where it comes down to it depends if you can't get all of that in but that's that's what i would do if, if you wanted to give it a good go and and really boost your fitness in seven weeks i'd be looking at three cycles two runs two three swims depending on your confidence level depending on your comfort level um because it's only 250 meters if you're a confident swimmer but want to try try do one swim a week um that's why the swim is the buffer it's 250 meters it's 10 lengths Mm. probably 10 minutes do you know like it's 10 minutes you reckon on swim do 250 meters if if you're i have no idea concept swim an average swimmer will swim anywhere between 150 and 250 minutes per 100 meter so you know you're looking at 10 minutes maximum okay. for someone who's just decided to float down the river you know like it's it you you're looking at it an okay swim so if you're even a 350 swimmer it's 250 meters you know you're you're 12 minutes max 12 minutes in water so would i be training three times a week for something that takes 12 minutes probably not um, unless you're nervous unless you're nervous and want to just improve your swimming you know and that's where you will have to start factoring in am i going to run and swim today am i going to cycle and swim today because the swim is your extra for you the the race does not require you to be training three times a week um, right whereas you're cycling and running that that would make a big difference so definitely cycling three running two there's five days um and then as many swims as you would like to add in so uh, one last follow up on that one would be your uh, recovery. So, is it different? I mean, if you run three, four times a week, whatever, you know, you do need recovery days from that. But, like you were saying before, the impact is not as great on, on swimming and cycling. But yeah. is it on, on the nervous system as a lot? Or is it just a case of yeah, you just feel good after a swim anyway that you don't need to? It will be a more lot. recovery. It will be a lot. Okay. Um, particularly if you were coming from the couch to this. Right. It is a shock to the system. It, but it is a great shock to the system. Sorry, I moved away from the mic. Well know. away from the mic. <laughs> yeah. It is a shock to the system. Um, the, it will have an effect. You will feel tired, especially after swimming. You could go in and swim five lengths. I don't know what it is about chlorine and swim pools. You'll come out and you're like, I'm starving I'm and I'm tired. Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> and you sleep. haven't burned that much calories. I don't know what it is. Um, so there will be an element of tiredness that will kick in. But... It goes against kind of what we always tell people that it is a lifestyle change. It is a lifestyle change. But if you're doing it for the seven weeks, you have to just say, right, I am doing this. It is a training camp you're putting yourself into to yep. do this event. Um, so I would do it. The lifestyle will come with it. I guarantee it. Um, because there's so much elements involved to swim. You're getting used to getting up for an early swim. You're getting used to going to the facility. There's that hour of your day that you thought you didn't have. You've now started to allocate. So that's where the habits will come in. And that's yep. why I would recommend it. It's, it. That's why I think the sport is phenomenal because there's just three options. If you're bored, you know, the minute you're bored of the swimming, you're onto the bike. The minute you're bored of the bike, you're out running. So it, it keeps it, keeps it kind of interesting. Recovery wise, w- most of, I will train most days because my cycles are at an intensity that allows me to train every day. So right. as you're going over, I have one rest a week um, and that's on an, a half Ironman training program. So I'd be on a two and a half hour long cycle, but the intensity is so low that I can actually run the next day. So okay. you have to kind of factor in, I wouldn't be going, as we've always said in the show, Sean, if you're going out to do your best 5k effort today you shouldn't really be running tomorrow no totally agree 
But if I'm going on an hour cycle today and I'm doing an easy 3K tomorrow, followed by a swim, that's a relatively good training. And you've all of a sudden turned a 20, 30 minute effort that rules you out for two days into three hours of training over two. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all about effort. It's all about relative effort that you're putting in. If you're keeping it easy now for people who are starting off from the couch, everything is going to be hard effort. So you need to be careful with how much you're doing. Um, and again, it comes back to, it depends. It depends on people's ability. Some people have a phenomenal ability on the bike. They will be super strong cyclists and never knew it. Um, for me, they all take work. The running takes work. The cycling takes work. The swimming is a fear. Yeah. So that's why it's not really good. We, you know, so yeah, just you kind of have to listen to the body. But if you're planning on training every day, keep the intensity low. And then as your fitness builds, as we get towards week four to five, then let's start going for, right, how quickly can I cycle? We'll put in a swim the next morning, no running. You know, gotcha. you, you can start to do a harder kind of sprint session. But again, you can do a sprint session and still be able to cycle tomorrow. So if you're doing an hour long cycle and every 15 minutes you just are, yeah, let's say every 10 minutes, you're going to do a sprint for 20 seconds. That is a hard intensity kind of training session. Still should be able to train the next day. And, and okay. people kind of struggle with that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, you're, you are putting in an intensity into the training, but the rest of the training is at such a relaxed kind of recovery level that they kind of negate the two and you should be able to get a training session in the next day. But again, that is the should and the, the science behind it, but everyone is different. You have to listen to the body. You have to say, I am tired. And then if you are saying you're tired, one look at training, training, yes, it will make sense that you're tired. Then you have to look at nutrition. Right. Are you fueling right? Because a lot of the time the tiredness is fueled by lack of fuel. Um, and that's something I found as well. That I wasn't eating right the first time I did it. I was just <laughs> more laugh it. Like I was just going. Yeah. And my first triathlon, I had no, no nutrition. I had nothing on the bike. Uh, and there I was 5k in going. I'm gassed for Need energy. something. Yeah. So you kind of have to look at how you're relaxing the body. Like I find if I'm doing a longer kind of session, then I start need to think in pastas, rices, potatoes. Do you know, there's, there's little things in that, you know, um, breads, uh, breads work different for different people. Some people bloating them. I don't mind an extra bit of bread to supplement the meal, you know, it, and that's a personal choice that it's easy. It's there. It's the extra carbs. It's calories. You're eating um, for fuel. Yes. So you just start, need to start thinking about that. With the swims, um, they're probably not as long and stuff. You can probably get away with your everyday kind of living with the swim. You know, you're, but if I, if I know of two sessions in the day, you need to be tactical. Porridge for breakfast. You know, you need mm -hmm. to start looking at that. And then you will start to find your energy picks up. Um, the body will settle into its natural kind of rhythm then with it. But it is, it is phenomenal. It, it is a great transition um, for any sort of lifestyle. Um, and I just hope... I haven't scared people away from it. I've given a lot of information and a lot of just my thoughts on it. Um, and it's, as you've said earlier, it's a lot of mistakes made. A lot of mistakes made. Similar to our running, although I think we made a lot more mistakes doing running than we did, than you did for triathlons in fairness to you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it is. There's, it, there is a lot to it. It can be an expense, but it's been, I have this Garmin watch and it cost 500 euros. <sighs> And I bought this when uh, I started this triathlon stuff. Yes, he did. And you said, yep. don't buy that. You're just getting into this gimmick. It'll be no use. Yada, yada, yada. I this did. watch is still on me today and has been with me for every kilometer and has encouraged all of it and the stats and everything. So, but I knew what I was getting into. I, I'm going to be a little bit petty here. I'm going to be a little bit petty before we wrap up the podcast on this one. You never mentioned that in the equipment. No. <laughs> not that you, yeah, I think if you're doing a try tomorrow, not, though, fairly, not required. you don't need a no, Garmin watch to do it. Watch. Your, your first one. But timing, do you, everyone wears a timing stamp. You'd be timed in and out. Mine is for my own training. It's yeah. for my own recovery. It's it's for me to be accountable to me. And and that's why it, it was it was there. If um, you've got seven weeks coming up now, the first thing you don't need to do is buy, buy a Garmin no, watch. Absolutely it's, not. Don't buy into all your extras. Yeah. Um, just just get out and give it a go it yeah, is the best advice yeah yeah um and look if you're not willing to part ways with the money and you're willing to try it 
there's no reason why people are creative now there's no reason why you can't set yourself up now out near sea point in dunleary or in a lake obviously pick somewhere that's safe and yeah where swimming is allowed and you know there are people around and you have a couple of people with you who know what they're doing <sighs> just in and, case and try it out yourself Do you know it doesn't have to be 250 meters then you know try 100 meters in the water just get used to it um there is a lot of good people who brought me on those swims um that i thought was brilliant yeah Brilliant. I think on that note, we will wrap up because we're approaching the hour mark in this podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> I am so if we still have, we have you with us, that means that you are definitely interested in doing triathlon. Do let us know. Let us know um, what you picked up in this one. Maybe if we throw up on, on Instagram a post on this episode of the podcast, do let us know in the comments or feel free to DM us. Let us know how, how you're getting on, how you're fine. If you said, you know what, after listening to that, I'm going to set myself up for the next seven weeks and I'm going to try it yeah and keep an eye on the instagram as well i'll put up my training sessions for the week obviously it's based around me it's mm. based around my goals it's based around my event um so you know people will have different opinions that's perfect everyone has one like i oh, know i won't say the word no no uh, no, no. no i'll leave it out but <laughs> it is there as a guide and it'll keep me accountable it'll it'll show people what it takes to and and for everyone full disclosure yeah I'm only back off all this the belly is still there sean's laughing at me so Sean doesn't judge Sean doesn't judge so from now it is seven weeks to the triathlon and I haven't swam in whatever amount so for anyone else who says seven weeks isn't long enough be encouraged that I myself am going through it and on that note guys thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Any Given Run Day podcast that's it for myself and Eric take care bye